Okay, today we are going to look at the DA40 TDI in Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is one of the aircraft that comes with the game. So I thought it might be interesting to start working our way over the next few videos through the stock aeroplanes that come with the various versions of Microsoft Flight Simulator because some of them are very, very good and they're modelled very well. So we're going to go and have a look at this TDA, uh, sorry, DA40 TDI. So let's go inside the aircraft and have a look around. So the first thing you're going to notice is it has a full instrument stack, which is great. So we can do radio navigation with this airplane. It's also got GPS and it's got transponder. Obviously all the basic controls are here. So you've got lights. Um, it's a bit interesting and in it seems to have an electrical starting system for the um, for the propeller. So rather than ignition, you know, as you would normally imagine it, so it's got a fuel master switch here. So you've got an emergency fuel tank as well as normal fuel tank. So fuel is obviously pumped up because it's a low wing aircraft. You can see the, the fuel caps on the wings and you'll notice straight away the visibility in this thing is amazing. So if you want to go sightseeing, this is a wonderful airplane to do it in. OK, so let's get it started up and see how we get on. So first things first, we're going to need to turn the electrical system to on via this switch in the middle here. And you get this pile of warnings come on. So just go and switch those off with the, the caution switch or the master warning switch. And then we're just showing low volts and pito. So low volts is obviously warning us because the engine isn't running that we're de or depleting the battery. So the first thing we'll get going is the engine itself. So we go and turn the engine master switch to on and then we turn this to start and we should find the engine will happily sit there and tick over. It's warning us now about the pitot heat. So pitot's down here. So we we'll turn the pitot heat on. We'll also turn the position and the strobe lights on. And the avionics master switch, which obviously switches on the GPS and will give power to the transponder. So we'll turn transponder on. We're not going to actually use it for anything today. We're just going to leave it switched on. And we're not going to use GPS either. So we're just going to go fly, fly a route. So the GPS is going to give us, or sorry, I should say the Garmin will give us our comm radios and GPS. But we're not actually going to use it. It's quite interesting. You get this um, RPM, digital RPM gauge. It shows you load on the system. So while we're on parking brake, if we just... rev it up it's quite interesting whoa we're rolling i've just hit the parking brakes where on earth, how on earth did that happen we very nearly caused an accident there look very very nearly hit this airplane so what we're going to do i thought oh, I, I didn't have the parking brake on that's why so something to notice about this tdi is it uses differential braking to handle on the ground, which is a problem for me because I don't have differential brakes on my controls. I only have a rudder pedal. So we're going to have to, it's going to be, you know, ground handling is going to be a problem for me with this aircraft. And it's not that you can't handle it on the ground, you can go and configure keys for it. So let's have a quick look. So in control options, what might we do with the ground handling? So if we go and look at brakes, we'll wait for this to load and go and look in the control of my joystick, which I twist for the rudder normally. So I'm going to search by name and search for the brake. And we've got left brake and right brake. So I'm wondering, so then you've got left brake axis and right brake axis. Um, I wonder if we gave both of those See, I haven't got two axes to spare, that's the shame. I guess we could use something else. So I've got a rudder trim. But yeah, that's only one axis. Um I'm gonna I'm gonna program two buttons. So left brake is going to be that one. You are just trying to assign an action to a device that is not... Okay, cancel that. I'm on the wrong controller. Let's come over here. 
So left break is going to be a button on my throttle quadrant and I'm going to validate that. And right brake is going to be another button. So at least I have some semblance of ground handling now, even though I don't have rudder pedals with, you know, with independent tow brakes. So let's come off the throttle. I'm going to cheat slightly here and go into slew mode and pull ourselves back away from the building. So you can see we're rolling again. So, okay, I'm going to now hold the left brake and open the engine. And you can see, look, the nose is castering. So there you go. So if you just, if you've got two buttons or keys on the keyboard that you can spare, then you can use them to steer the aeroplane on the ground. Obviously, the aircraft has a whacking great rudder, and that's obviously why, if you've got some thrust over the fuselage from the propeller, then it will steer only just though and you need obviously you need some if you open the throttle then it starts to steer otherwise you have to remember to use the the left and right brakes so i'm going to try using the brake keys so they seem to be quite progressive they don't switch on straight away Obviously I've got um, a button mapped to just wheel brakes, which is obviously hitting both left and right brakes. So the wind today is the opposite de way down the runway. So let's get back inside. Let's get that left brake on. You can see from the, the wing wind sock over there. So we need to go to the other end of the runway to take off, which we're about to do. quite a quiet aeroplane from inside isn't it so let's go and sit up I'm just going to go and check the volume levels so you get to hear it I well actually yeah I think it's probably okay I'm always paranoid about getting the the volume levels right so I come through clearly and you can also hear the sounds of the aircraft but without it completely drowning me out I think the worst case scenario for that is the twin otter which is probably the loudest aircraft in the the history of video games or simulators I should say. The the hardcore simulator lot hate it being called a video game, so it's kind of it's easy to wind them up. Okay, so right break. Oh we have a pause from the simulator. Now is this a crash or a pause? So all we've done so far is sit on the ground here and mess around and it's decided okay that's far too much, we're gonna crash it for you. So let's see if it suddenly wakes up after ten or fifteen seconds. If it doesn't, we've just wasted our time for a few minutes. Oh, it's woken up. I will say that since Sim Update 8, I've had more crash to death stops than I've had in quite some time. Okay, let's get cracking then. So, flaps to take off position. And open the throttle. We're also going to make sure the trim is at take off as well. Whoa! This is what happens when you try to do more than one thing at once without VR. And the airplane is airborne, and we rotate. That's the worst takeoff in history. 
So we'll circle round and do a touch and go just to prove we can do this. <laughs> Hey, the weather's looking quite extreme today, so we're going to raise the flaps. Going to go full throttle. You see it's not the fastest aeroplane in the world. Certainly not while climbing. We're climbing at 500 feet a minute. But, I say it again, isn't it fantastic, the view? So we're just going to fly the reciprocal, so it's about 240 and 60 for, for Booker. So can cut the throttle back a little bit. Let's just trim it out for level flight. So the speed is gathering, and obviously it's quite a slippery aeroplane, but it's not that fast. About 120 knots cruise is about what you'll be looking for. Obviously I can push the throttle up against the stops. Let's go and have a look. Has it got any problem with running at full throttle? So we've got various gauges down here. And we're climbing now at 1,000 feet a minute. So at full, uh, at full throttle, let's just have a look. So I'm just trimming us out to go level. So will it go into the kind of the yellow overspeed area in level flight at full throttle. Not quite by the look of it. But it's worth pointing out we are going downwind. So indicated our, our speed over the ground is probably more like 140 knots. So let's turn around back into the wind and see how that looks then. In quite a steep turn. So it'll be interesting to see what speed we can do. There was about a 15 or 20 knot wind, so there's the airfield. So let's see how this behaves. So flying straight and level. And yeah, going into the wind, the indicated airspeed is obviously going to go higher. But not too much. So looking from outside, let's have a little look at the aeroplane. It's got this huge bubble canopy, which is obviously why the visibility is so good. But otherwise, it's a pretty straightforward aeroplane to fly, isn't it? So I'm just looking around. Yeah, fuel quantity is over on the right-hand display over here. And you've got a fuel flow in gallons an hour. So you can do some mental arithmetic on that, which is quite cool. Works very well. And you can see there's some stalks around the place. That'll be for the lighting of the instruments. So if we were flying this at night, you can light it up. So we just try that briefly. So we're going to change the time of day of the simulator to night time and let's go and turn on some of these lights so we've got flood lighting in the cockpit and we've also got lighting of the instruments themselves from the which is quite cool isn't it okay i'm gonna turn that back off and let's go and switch this back to live weather okay so we're flying over High Wycombe in the south of the UK we're going to turn back round again back towards Booker so if we look be behind us it's over here we're a bit high so let's cut the engine and see. Actually, let's do a stall. You normally wouldn't do this over a town, but we're going to do it. So let's nose up. We're almost up into the clouds here. So I've pulled the throttle back to idle. I just want to see how it behaves, really. A little bit um, wide angle on the image so you can see 
what's going on. So I'm holding back, holding back, holding back. There's the stall warning. Pulling back, pulling back. And the right wing has fallen, yeah. So we dropped a wing. But as soon as I let go, the aeroplane became stable. So it did drop a wing. Let's see if it does it consistently. So if we climb back up. So we'll gently climb and circle as we go. And we'll try that again. So we're going to go slowly back towards the airfield. Coming up to 2,000 feet in a moment. Okay, power off. Let's try that again and see if it's the right wing that goes again. So we're level, feeding in elevator, feeding in elevator. We obviously, yeah, it's edges towards the right wing every time. Okay, that's good to know. Okay, so we're going to turn back towards 60 degrees, which is the reciprocal of the runway direction. And then we'll try and approach and see how we do. But it seems very, very docile, doesn't it? You can get to kind of 50 knots with lots of back stick and it's very stable. The view behind isn't great, so can we use the... Oh, you can use the keys to look through the gap in the canopy, which is quite useful. And if you scoot yourself forward... So, obviously, if you've got VR, that would be an awful lot easier. So you could look round over your shoulder. Um, if we look round the rest of the aircraft, yeah. So, it's not too bad for looking around. So the, obviously the reason for doing this is to get some reference of where we are in terms of the runway. So we're obviously flying across the runway direction, so we're going to start descending. For some reason the simulator is slowing down. I think it may be mist that's causing it. I think drawing mist is quite a burden on the graphics card. Or it can often be. Okay, so let's turn back round to 240 degrees. We should find ourselves in around about the right place for an approach. So I'm just holding the throttle now, holding altitude at 1500 feet. So there's the airfield. So let's come off the speed a little bit. Start descending. We'll sit up in the seat so we can see over the top easily. And we go for flaps. We're going a little bit fast, but we can just lift the nose to get the flaps down. So we'll go for full flaps. Remember, we don't have to drop gear. So we're a bit high, so we're going to try and see how this plane behaves when we side slip. So I've gone full left rudder and then dropping the right wing, and it doesn't really do it. Doesn't like it one bit. Okay, so we're too high and too fast, so we're going to do an orbit. So it's unlike things like the Kodiak, where you can side slip like a champion and it looks like you're coming down in an elevator. You can't get away with it in this aircraft. So we're just going to do a quick orbit to lose some height. 
Obviously in the real world we would have done the circuit and gone round again. And we would have been more mindful of our altitude turning towards the runway. But it's good to know these things, that, you know, what you can and can't get away with. Okay, 500 feet. Come off the throttle. Now we're going to need to remember as soon as we slow down on the runway that we don't have good ground handling with this because we have the differential brakes. Again, look at it accelerating even on full flaps. Of course we're going with the wind, aren't we? That'll be the reason. That's why we accelerated. <laughs> so we're going full throttle. And this is where talking and recording a video, messing around with sound, messing around with controls, you forget basic airmanship very quickly. So, didn't think at all about the direction I was approaching from. So it would be interesting actually to side slip into the wind now. So the reason we were accelerating is because we were flying with the wind. The reason we couldn't get down without accelerating. Okay, so flaps down. There's the airfield. And this is going to be a completely different story. Because we've got about a 15 knot headwind. You can see already, it's a completely different story. So it just goes to show, if you've not flown with the wind on in Flight Simulator, if you're just starting out and you fly with either clear skies or few clouds or things like that, it really is worth putting the live weather on and going somewhere where there's a bit of a stiff breeze, just so you can kind of, you know, get this sense that landing into the wind is easy. It's much easier than a normal landing. Obviously landing with a crosswind becomes a different story. But to be honest, from the first person view out of the cockpit, even landing with a crosswind isn't that difficult. But you can almost, you can see this 10, 15 knot wind into our face is making landing a very, very controllable proposition. There's no hurry. We're not whistling down the runway anymore, look. So we're literally just gliding in. And we can just ease back pressure on the stick and let the air aircraft fall onto the runway. And we're down. So there you go. So this was the TDI. Let's see if we can do a short takeoff. So this is full flaps. So come through 60 knots. And rotate. And yeah, it climbs remarkably quickly, like if you really push it. It can't sustain a climb rate that steep, but if we come off the flaps now, we should see it starting to accelerate, and you can see that on the indicated airspeed. So we're fast enough to fly at 60 knots without flaps. We saw on the stall tests we could easily do kind of 50 knots without it falling out of the sky. So there's obviously a area of safety margin built in on the um, the instrument measurements or indications I should say okay so or markings even <laughs> I'll get the right word eventually so we're back turning around towards 240 degrees coming up for a thousand feet so there's 240 degrees so if we look out there's the runway 
runway 24 and we're going to turn back towards runway 06 in a moment so we'll just give ourselves I think it's about 245 the actual runway direction so we're flying with the wind so we're hurtling along then we'll just do one more landing and then we'll call it a day for the moment obviously you can do VOR navigation in this there is no autopilot though so you're going to have to be on the ball with flying it as well as playing with the radio but it does seem to trim out very well I'm just going to trim the elevator here and you can see get quite good control over it and I've let go of the stick now and yeah the plane is pretty much flying along it's not falling off to one side as some of the other aircraft do I guess that's because it's got quite a lot of dihedral on the wings so it sits quite nicely in cruise all, all on its own okay we're up to 1500 feet so I'm going to stop us climbing I'm going to pull the throttle back to about 80% Now that's interesting. This is showing that we're climbing. Okay, it, yes, it does correspond. I was going to say the needle had stopped, even though we were showing positive rate of climb on the vertical speed. Okay, so we've now got a bit of room to turn round to 60 degrees. There's the River Thames. It's Marlow over there. And we're turning back towards the runway. There's the runway over here. So we're going to carry on at 1500 feet for the moment. Let's sit up in the seat so we can see the runway. So you can see we're going absolutely flat out at the moment and it's showing it we're on the verge of overspeeding obviously because we're going into the wind so you know the indicated airspeed is faster than our actual speed over the ground It's unusual this part of the world to get the wind from this direction. It's quite interesting. So I've not extended the flaps yet. I've just cut the engine back to idle and we're going to glide in. It, this plane glides very well. Just out of interest, shall we dead stick it? let's turn the engine master switch to off will it let us actually cut the engine we can't yeah it won't let us will it so we're still on idle can't actually cut the engine. I'm worried if I turn off the electrics. I guess we can try it. Just to see what happens really. So yeah, it's still gliding remarkably well. and I'm going to extend the flaps now whether they come out is another matter because I've turned the power off no they haven't look which is accurate that's really good so I'm just going to steer us down the runway using the rudder 
So obviously we've got cable connections to the control surfaces, but we shouldn't have any flaps if we can have a look outside. Yeah, we had no power, therefore the flaps didn't extend, which is perfect. So yeah, so you can play those kind of games with this and do simulated electrical failures and things like that, and it will actually behave itself. It's a bit odd though that the engine hasn't died. So we've cut power. We've turned off the engine master switch. We've also turned off the electrics and the engine is still running. So if we stop on the runway and the propeller has no stop. So there's a bit of strangeness there. But otherwise, that was great fun. So that's the DA40 TDI in Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's a great little general aviation aeroplane. And obviously the visibility at the front is fantastic for sightseeing. And you get some basic instruments, so you can do point-to-point -point navigation very easily. And you can follow flight plans, obviously, with the GPS. So yeah, um, definitely worth having a, a look at it. I go have a fly in it. It controlled, it was very docile to fly. You saw even doing the spin tests. It would drop a right wing when really pushed into it but otherwise it was great um and i think yeah that will do for today so oh, what's this instrument right up here oh it's a suction for the engine that's fine okay so um yeah there you go i'm going to stop recording there go and try this airplane out it's very very good <laughs>